it is a cold, rainy, gloomy fall day in Nashville. It's just that season. Let's go on and step inside and heat things up. What it do, YouTube? A big, warm Thanksgiving welcome from me to you. What's up, everybody? My name is Paul the Fifth, and welcome to my channel, Lazy Studios Nash. This year, I am unable to make it home to Indiana to visit my family, so I decided to order a Thanksgiving meal from Cracker Barrel. I have fried turkey, fried okra, a loaded baked sweet potato, and for dessert, pumpkin pie, and to wash things down with huckleberry sweet tea. You're probably asking yourself, Paul, why are you sharing your Thanksgiving meal ingredients with us? And that is a great question. We as human beings have two universal languages, right? food and music. Let's say you're traveling, you go to another country and you rub your stomach like this. Most likely people are going to know that you are either hungry or you may have a stomach ache. So for today's video, I am going to incorporate these ingredients into a mix. It's a song I recorded when I was a student at the recording workshop called Seasons. I'm going to try to do something that the pros do. I'm going to be deconstructing a mix. I'm going to show you the original recording and then I've already mixed a song, but we're going to break it down piece by piece and tell you what I did to make things go from here to here. If you are ready, let's go. Let's do this. Here is the session that we are working with today. I originally recorded this when I was a student at the recording workshop in 2015, so a while ago, and the band was called Bart and the Chasers. This is a song called Seasons. This is a perfect song for today and this time of year, especially since today is Thanksgiving and in two weeks it'll be my birthday. I'll be hitting the big 4-1. Two weeks after that, Christmas is here and a week later, it'll be New Year's. I have a lot of big plans for the upcoming year. I am currently working on a website. I'm gonna put some of these videos up there as well. And I'm trying to get some more business from online clients and I want to have them send me their music and I'll mix it, send it back, do some revisions. Hopefully everybody's happy. The other thing I'm trying to do is grind like a mofo and save and save and save. Another goal that I have is to buy a house by 2023 and have a home studio right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's get back to our mix. So here is the OG session. It was originally recorded February 10th, 2015 at 6 p.m. This session is a little unique. The band decided to record two songs back to back. So we've got one here. The first one is Seasons and this other one is called Flat Top. Let's take a look at the mix window and see what this song is comprised of. Command plus equals. We have on this track drums. We have kick drum, sub kick, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hats, tom one, tom two, overhead left, overhead right, and one mono room pike. We've got bass DI, acoustic guitar. We've got electric guitars, electric guitar cabs, electric guitar bus. There's a VCA on there. Bart vocal, Bart talkback. Bart was the lead singer of this band. It's the name Bart and the Chasers. We have a scratch vocal, Eric talkback. I think he may have been the drummer or another player in the band, the master fader, the cue, and then the ox. Let's listen to this song from the start to the end, and it's called Seasons, so he's talking about different seasons that we go through. Myself, I'm in a new season going through some transitions. Yeah, I had to cut my hair off. I got this big knot in the back of my head. We don't know if it's cancerous yet or not. We're in some testing phases, so wish me luck and keep me in your prayers. We'll see what happens here. Let's listen to the song from the start to the finish. And during the song while it's playing, I'll give some commentary on what I think can be done a little bit better, what we can do to make things stand out. And then we'll listen to the mix and I'll break it down piece by piece and I'll show you what I did to make things stand out. In the beginning, the band is goofing off a little bit, just playing some notes and chords. And then there's a count in, here we go. First thing I noticed is things were recorded at pretty decent levels. However, these guitars are way too loud. The acoustic guitar is not coming through.
Those drums sound a little weak. Changing up the season. It's only just begun. With the cold wind blowing. Kind of clipping a little on the master fader. There's some weird frequencies in his vocal that are standing out to me, kind of harsh. Maybe in the upper mid range. Just like yesterday. Autumn is upon us. I really like the sound of the drums. They're acoustic, natural, but we can enhance them. The winter is comes calling. This bass is almost like non existent. The vocal is really just kind of overpowering everything. I think this was supposed to be some verb on his vocal, but I'm not noticing it coming through. Tom seem to be almost a little distorted with a plane. Season is a lover. They will tear your soul apart. The high has to come down a little bit. Sounds like his vocal's clipping a little bit. Look how high that is. There's the acoustic, you can kind of hear it a little bit. These guitars are still way too loud. We need to get some balancing going on here. So we did some automation there where we had that automatically fade out, pretty consistent. So there's a lot of issues with this. This was just recorded, no mixing was done, hardly any plugins. So the first thing I noticed, the electric guitars and the cabs are way too loud. Vocal is just above everything. It's just not sitting in that mix. The drums are kind of weak. The bass seems a little non-existent. And I really want to pull the acoustic guitar out and I want to hear the percussiveness of that pick. Let's take a listen to the new mix and we'll break this down instrument by instrument and we'll see what happens. Hopefully you like the new revision. Do you hear that? That's the fans in my M1 MacBook Pro processing, trying to keep itself cool. I think I have finally given it a run for its money. If you might be new here, last year when I got this in October, I did a lot of benchmark tests. I tried to get this thing to overheat and overpower. You can check out that in the link in the description or maybe up here somewhere too. But what I want to do now is relate these ingredients to our mix. The star of any song is the vocal has to stand forefront. The star for our Thanksgiving dinner, of course, is the turkey. Turkey vocals. For my drums in the dish, I have a lot of okra. Mmm, so good. For our guitars, I want to relate this loaded baked sweet potato to them. Guitars in general, including the electrics, the cabs, and the acoustic, and then the bass, holding things down on the low end. For our master fader, our pumpkin pie, which is gonna be nice and sweet, rounding things off. And then my sweet tea, I'm holding it so I don't spill it on my computer. This is gonna be our effects. 
reverb, compression, things like that. Before I let you actually listen to my revisions on this mix, I want to talk about a couple of things. My main goal with this song was to make it sound more well-rounded, where we could hear all the instrumentation, we can make his lead vocal up front, but it wasn't overpowering. And I wanted everything just to blend together and I want it to be more of like an organic type of a feel. So now that we know that, let me show you what I did to organize this session and make things a little bit neater, tighter, and cleaner. So I put everything together as far as like instruments. Here's the drums. You'll notice that I have created them my favorite color, blue. And then I put an aux or a bus next to that. I did that across the board with all the instrumentation. So what that means is I've routed all my drums through this single channel and I can control their entire level with this one single fader. Moving on here, we've got the bass guitar. I actually duplicated that bass, added some effects to it, blended them together. Sounds pretty cool, we'll get to that here in a moment. Here is the bass bus, acoustic guitar, acoustic bus. You've got the electric guitars, electric bus, the electric cabs, or the cabs, cab bus. We've got a cab verb and a band verb. Here's Bart's vocal, we've got a Vox bus, Vox verb, delay, and here is our master fader. So I think what I'll do is the first instrument that we hear is the electric guitars. Let's listen to them and I'll show you what I did. Here we go. There's the guys playing around. Wow, do you know how those guitars aren't as rough and overpowering and bleeding your ears out? So here's what I did. We'll start with the cabs. Wait a minute, what the heck is that? Tomorrow's Black Friday, right? I may or may not have a video coming out about plugins. Okay, so I do, but I jumped the gun here. Since my birthday's in a couple weeks, we're in the holiday season. I'm doing a lot more mixing. I needed something that's gonna be a little more in depth, intuitive, and easier to use that can get me better results. What have you noticed in my prior mixing tutorials that's been my go-to EQ? That's right, the FabFilter Pro Q2. I went ahead and got the Pro Q3. Let's listen to these guitars and what I did. Rolled off all this low, muddy grittiness that we didn't need, that rumble. Accentuated this area here, 98 hertz, a little low end. Pulled out all these harsh, nasty frequencies that kind of hurt the ear. Got that on both tracks there. And it's also on the DIs because the DIs were recorded direct input, clean, and then we mic the cabs. Same exact signal, frequency spectrum, did the same thing to all of those. Now let's go to the beginning and listen to the acoustic guitar. Wow, you can actually hear the acoustic guitar and hear some clarity and definition. So how did I do that? Well, the first thing I did was I added this trim plugin we raised the gain on the signal and used the Pro Q3 EQ, cut out all this muddiness, boosted a little bit at 104 hertz, and we cut out all these harsh frequencies. And we raised things at about 5,071 hertz. That really added some top in and it allowed that pick and the percussiveness of that to really shine through. Three simple steps to make this acoustic guitar sound way better. Let's keep moving on. I'm gonna mute his vocal, then we'll go to bass guitar and drums, and then we'll listen to his vocals here. Here's the bass tracks. Here's the initial track there. What I did was I added some trim again. We brought that level up. Added some Pro Q3 again. We took all the highs, cut them out of the equation to this area here, 817 hertz. So we're just hearing this low area. And then we took out some of that low end grip I added a compressor to level things out, a CLA 2A, and then I added some tape. Kramer Tape, this is one of my favorite Waves plugins. Then I duplicated this track, I brought the volume down a bit, same thing on the trim in Pro-Q3, but this time I added a phaser effect. So check this out. Take that off.
Do you hear how it kind of sounds like things are swirled a little bit in there? That's what the phaser effect does. Let's listen to both these together. Once you blend them together, it really brings things out and it's like, wow, holy crap, that sounds good. And then on the bus, same thing, Pro-Q3. Uh, on the compressor this time, we use more of an analog compressor. I used a Fairchild 670. And then I went to another tape plugin, but this is the Waves J37. If you don't have it, you might want to get this. It's probably going to be on sale tomorrow. So we've covered the electric guitars, the cabs, the acoustic, the bass. Now let's take a look at the drums here. What we'll do is we'll select all of these, shift, option, solo. And speaking of drums, we did some automation here at the beginning. So what is automation? Basically automation is a tool you can use on your fader and it allows you to bring levels up and down as you need something to fit in the mix. So what I noticed initially on these drums when they first came in, they were just kind of drab and weak, but I really wanted those cymbals to say, hey, I'm here, we're getting ready to start this song. So let's check out this automation in context with everything. And remember our okra was our drums. A lot of moving pieces here. So you notice we've got those sent to the verb, a little bit of the verb there. On the kick drum, let's just solo these one by one. We'll talk about what I did. I'll try to make this quick. On the kick, rolled off that low end, boosted the fundamental, pulled out that mid-range, and right here, it's almost 42, almost 4200 to get that attack and click of the pedal. I didn't want it to be too much. Here's our snare, or actually here's our sub kick by itself. It sounds kind of crappy. We pulled all this high end out, pulled that out, accentuated that area. But what happens when we add that in conjunction with our kick drum? We get a really nice sounding kick. Let's take a look at our snare top, Pro Q3. Roll this off. I wanted to keep a little bit of that low end in there. And this right here is a little ring, but I wanted to bring that out. Pull this mid-range out. Right here about 5300, we boosted that to get some attack, some high-end Christmas to make that snare just pop. Let's bypass this. Simple EQ moves make a huge difference. And then on our snare bottom, check this out. Whoa, kind of high, but it really captures those snares on the bottom of the drum. We rolled all this low out, accentuated some of that mid-range, pulled this out and boosted right here to capture that crispness of the snares. We've got that low end that we boosted in the high end. Yeah, and then we've got our hats. Pro Q3, we rolled all that low end off. So we're just accentuating the highs here. Then we added a basic bomb factory compressor to even things out. And let's talk about our toms. Here's tom one, here's a tom hit. So we added Pro Q3. We rolled this low end area off, accentuated the fundamental, pulled out that low end, and we boosted again. So your tom is kind of like a small kick drum. You got that low end fundamental, you pull out the mids and boost a little bit of the high. Let's take a look at Tom 2. Pretty similar. However, this is a lower frequency instrument, so the fundamentals down here. We pull that low end out and we boost it on the top end again. All right, overhead left and right. Let's take a look at these. Just 
a light EQ. We rolled out this area here, a little boost on the low end to capture that kick drum. Pulled out some of the mid range. It was kind of sharp, not sounding too good. And I did a high shelf, but I actually, instead of raising it, I lowered it because those cymbals were just piercing. It's way too much. Did that on both overheads. Check out this next cool move that I did on our mono room mic. I did some EQ, rolled off this area, boosted the low end, mid out, little boost here. But we'll see this right here. I added some distortion. Clean. It just kind of made things sound distorted. It, I did that on purpose. Check this out. You notice it mostly on the snare drum, on our drum bus, Pro Q3. Took out that low end right here, a little low boost for the kick drum, pulled out the mids and a boost on the highs for the cymbals. Here's a new plugin that I use that I'm talking about tomorrow. This is the Waves SSL EV2. And what I did, I went to a preset here and I went to drum group excitement and it really added some sizzle and it brought those drums out a lot. So we've covered all the other instruments in this song. We've covered all these ingredients. So let's talk about the turkey. Bart's vocal. We use the Pro Q3 again, cut out some of this low end, just some of that rumble. Right here, we accentuated some of the low end in his vocal that sounded good. And I pulled out these mid-range frequencies that were just really harsh on my ear and didn't sound good at all. And for some clarity and crispness, we added some top end at about 6,200. Now let's listen to this. The changing of the season. EQ's in. It's only just begun. Now it's off. With the cold winds blowing. Can you hear that nasally? These frequencies, they just don't sound good. When you're sitting in the sun. Yeah, much better. Now let's check out his vocals in context with the rest of the instrumentation. Changing of the season. And to spice up and make his vocal a little more interesting and kind of stick out, make it more rounded, we added some reverb. I use this Flexverb, it's an SSL plugin. And I found this London Oxford plate verb that I really liked. And then on the delay, we have just a mod delay that's a built in Pro Tools plugin. So now we have everything put together. We've got his vocal sounding nice. Let's listen to his vocal in context with the rest of the song from where he comes in here. the reverb tail see we put all these things together we took his vocal and we took out those harsh frequencies we pulled it down a bit he's not overpowering the guitars aren't overpowering we did a lot but we made simple moves let's talk about our pumpkin pot and the master fader did a little pro q3 and if you'll remember when it comes to the master fader you want to make small moves here rolled off this low end a little boost on low and then we pulled out this mid-range and a little boost for clarity and presence for the overall mix then i used one of my favorite go-to plugins this is by chris lord algae it's called cla mix down and what i did was i just started with this clear view preset next on the chain make things a little wider. I used a Waves plugin. This is an S1 imager. I pan things out so everything is pretty wide. But for a mix like this, like I said, I wanted it to be organic, natural, and well-rounded. Then we added some more tape here, the J37 again. And then we added a bus compressor. This is an SSL compressor. And I used the Soft Stereo Bus Comp preset. And then to keep things in check, we use a limiter. This is a waves limiter. And I did the lo-fi tape 
noise limiting. Now I've showed you how I deconstructed this mix. Let's listen to it from the beginning to the end. And I'm gonna eat my food. Don't mind me, please. Symbols. The verb effects. Changing of the season. So we just begun. Parky. Instrumental. Oh man, S that. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's my deconstructing of this mix after I've already mixed it, sharing with you my tips. What did you think? If you've watched to this point, I thank you so much. So this is a Thanksgiving gift from me to you. Hopefully you're having a great day with your friends and family, celebrating and being thankful for all that you have. Things could always be a lot worse, but we are here doing this thing together and learning music. I thank you again so, so much. All right, guys, have a great, happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you in the next one. Actually, tomorrow. <laughs>